Hey everyone, Lewis here with Lab Padre, and thanks for tuning in to our first weekly update of 2022. Now let's get into it. On March 3rd, two 12-axled self-propelled modular transporters, or SPMTs, were brought to the launch site, preceded by an 8-axle SPMT that previously brought counterweights for a potential move of Ship 20. Prior to Highway 4's closure for Starship testing, we got a nice show at South Texas Tracking Station. Dish 2 on the right took aim at Ship 20, while Dish 1 briefly tracked Falcon 9's second stage across the sky as it carried Starlink Group 4-9 to orbit. SpaceX's tracking stations provide communications with both Falcon and Starship as they provide vehicle telemetry to SpaceX's mission control in Hawthorne. The orbital propellant farm made quick work of filling Starship 20 for cryogenic testing, topping off the ship with liquid oxygen in the ship's oxygen tank and liquid nitrogen in the methane tank. This is the first time we've seen the tanks fill up together, and they did so in record time in about an hour and 45 minutes. A valve on S-20 produced a loud bang after a rapid decompression, knocking off the ice around the top region. After being used to lift the wide bay walls, Buckner reconfigured their Liber LR11000 series crane for a longer reach and heavier lifts, and has now been raised to continue assembly work. The crane will be used to install the roof structures and the new overhead cranes. This is the second time the crane has been reconfigured. The crane had previously been used to build out the launch pad infrastructure, and notably the tank farm's insulating shells, before being moved and having its jib lengthened for constructing the new wide bay. As a stabilis methane truck pulled up to the orbital launch site, the tanker's trailer brake system appeared to catch fire. Fortunately, the observant gate guard quickly stopped the driver and with a handy fire extinguisher, the smoking brakes were quickly extinguished. Previously, cryo testing revealed the presence of leaks in Ship 20's tank hatches, particularly from the liquid oxygen tank, where locks poured down the side of the starship. Both of the hatches were eventually swapped out. One of the first lifts of the newly reconfigured Bucky was raising the stairs into wide bay for eventual access to the top floor. This will give easier access for bridge crane installation and maintenance. Assembly of Booster 7 continued with the LOX tank being lifted and stacked onto the thrust section, where it was quickly tacked together on the construction stand. Overnight, both sections were lifted onto the transport stand and the methane tank was placed on top. The two absorption columns, or what could possibly be vertical tanks meant for the orbital fuel farm, were shipped out separately from Starbase, Texas. One absorption column left Sanchez on February 19th, and the other left shortly after. On March 7th, they were both spotted upon their arrival by Gator Cam at Port Canaveral. SpaceX recovery ship Megan was also spotted changing docks during Dragon capsule recovery training. Megan, originally the Go Searcher, was built in 2010, was leased to SpaceX in 2016, and started training for Crew Dragon recovery in 2018. It began Crew Dragon recovery missions in November 2020 with the Crew 1 mission. After successfully launching Starlink 4 9 on its 11th mission to orbit, SpaceX's ship Bob and autonomous landing ship Just Read the Instructions returned with Booster 1061 to Port Canaveral, Florida. The new booster transport stand's vehicle alignment pins were also observed being raised and lowered during testing. The pins help to guide the booster on and off its transport mount, and they keep the booster from swaying in the wind while it's being lifted by the SpaceX crane on the tower's chopsticks. A new rectangular structure was also spotted lowering into the nose cone barrel section at the triangular windbreak, also known as Iron Hinge. This part appears to be a supporting framework for payloads, or possibly a prototype elevator for the Starship human landing system. Rolling down Highway 4, sculptor and artist Sergio Fernari's lunch atop a skyscraper modeled after the famous photograph made a surprise appearance at Starbase. A series of tests were conducted on the integration tower's various systems starting with the quick disconnect arm stabilizing claws. 
before moving on to the arm itself, which takes about 3 minutes and 45 seconds to fully retract outward. The chopsticks were next to be tested. In a series of short movements, the chopsticks were raised to the top of the tower, taking about 14 minutes before the chopsticks arms were hydraulically opened and closed. With testing complete, the chopsticks were lowered back down to the base, taking another 14 minutes to make this maneuver. These tests help verify that the systems of the tower are all operating smoothly. The large vertical stand known as the Raptor servicing platform was moved to the area adjacent to the orbital launch mount. The stand will be used for servicing, repairing, and if need be, replacing any of the 33 Raptors underneath Super Heavy. The large scissor lift platform will perform the final lifting and positioning of each Raptor. A new booster transport stand was seen leaving Sanchez on its way to the production site. This will be SpaceX's third hydraulically actuated Super Heavy transport stand, which is a critical component in the transport and final stacking of the Super Heavy boosters. This particular unit was used for stacking Booster 7. As for the two other stands, the newly modified transport stand for Booster 4 was seen headed to the orbital launch site on Friday, while the third is being used to hold Booster 5 in the rocket garden. The lower section of Booster 7, which consists of the common dome, liquid oxygen tank, and engine section, was lifted, rotated, and placed on the transport stand for final stacking of the Super Heavy booster. Making its fourth flight, Falcon 9 Booster 1052 lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying Starlink Batch 4-10 to low Earth orbit. And there you have it. Thanks for watching Lab Padre's weekly Starbase news. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, click the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when our next video drops. See you all next week. Lab Padre out.